Welcome to another lesson in this free six-day mini course. Today we're going to be talking about finding your niche and sourcing products to sell online. Now before we begin, I just want to emphasize one of the philosophies behind this six-day mini course. So first of all, finding the right niche is a very important aspect of starting an online store. But the important thing to realize is that we're not looking to hit a home run. It's about finding a niche or a set of products to sell that will make enough money to allow you to live the lifestyle that you want. Okay, and So as a result, we're not trying to start the next big thing. We're not trying to start the next Amazon, the Facebook, the Google. It's mainly about finding a niche that will allow you to make that nice six-figure payout so that you can quit your job. It's about finding a niche that will allow you to work a minimum number of hours so that you can actually spend more time doing the things that you love. So with that philosophy, the goal that we have is to find products that have just enough demand to meet your income requirements. And so as a result, the niche cannot be too competitive and it cannot be that saturated either. And in general, you're going to want to find products that are not readily available in brick and mortar stores. Now, one of the most common questions that I do get asked is how a very small niche store can actually compete against the big guys like the Walmarts, the Targets, and the department stores. And I thought I'd just address this really quick. Large stores have huge infrastructure requirements and supply issues to deal with. So as a result, you know, Walmart, for example, they have stores all across the nation. And in general, they have to ship product to all these locations. And as a result, it's generally not economical for them to carry a large quantity of goods unless there's going to be significant demand. And so as a result, because they have all these supply issues, they generally don't carry a wide variety of very specific items. Now, big players tend to focus on very hot mainstream products. And in general, it doesn't make sense for some of the larger stores to focus on products that only apply to a smaller group of people. So what does that mean? There's a ton of products out there that will make you a six, seven, or eight figure income, but the big box stores won't be interested in them because it doesn't have mass worldwide appeal. And that's why when you go shopping at a Walmart, you're not going to find a huge variety of items. And as a result, if you create a very niche online store and focus on a small subset of products, you can succeed because you can do that product category much more effectively and much better than some of the big box stores and earn that business for some of the smaller niche sort of products. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So in that respect, my recommended criteria for products that you want to sell in your own shop are that, you know, first of all, the products should not be fragile and easy to ship. Since this is an e-commerce store, you're going to be shipping all of your products, and so it's in your best interest to pick stuff that's not going to break very easily in the mail. And as a result, since you're going to be shipping product once again, you want to ship product that's generally small and doesn't take up too much physical space for shipping reasons. And one thing that's actually very important is that your product's inherent value should be ambiguous. And as a result, I generally want you to avoid branded products because when a product has a brand that's readily recognized, it's very easy to, you, to do uh, comparison shopping online. And what you want to do is you want to pick products that don't have a set dollar value so that people can't do comparison shopping. And just as an example, we sell personalized handkerchiefs on our website. And since these are branded with our own brand, uh, no one else sells these. And as a result, really no one knows what the price of these should actually be. And in general, you want to pick products that are not readily available in brick and mortar stores for some of the same reasons. So for example, if I were to sell something that was readily available at Target, someone would that person would probably not buy from my store because they'd probably just pick it up on their regular target run so you generally want to pick products that aren't readily available in stores and have some sort of ambiguous value and one more important factor about picking a product is that it should be timeless and not go obsolete because the last thing that you want to do is sell products where you're constantly trying having to update the product description because what you're trying to sell has gone obsolete and so that pretty much excludes electronics or anything that gets updated on a very quick product cycle. So just keep some of those factors in mind as we brainstorm uh, for products that you want to sell online. Now, I just wanted to give you a couple of examples of students in my class that found very good niches 
and as a result started making money right away. So one of my students, Brandon, started an online store selling washer toss games. He noticed that uh, in all the brick and mortar stores there weren't a lot of these sets being sold and as a result after his launch you know his store immediately started making sales because the demand was there. He ended up making about $2,700 within the first couple months, did not spend any money on marketing, uh, the demand was there and he's been selling these ever since. Okay, and once again, this is one of those, an example of one of those niche products that one of the big stores or the sports stores aren't going to be carrying high quality product or in variety. And so if you can find this sort of niche, you can make a decent amount of money. Now, another student in my class, Sean, he started an online store selling leather working supplies. And once again, he didn't really spend that much money on marketing either. He pretty much launched and his store has made over six figures in one and a half years. And these tools are just very specialized tools. They aren't really sold in stores because there aren't that many leather workers out there. But there is a small select group of leather workers that are always looking for very precise leather working tools. And finally, I just want to talk about another student, Lob, who started selling cupcake towers online. And once again, in this case, he chose his keywords that he wanted to target in Google very carefully. And so his store now ranks on the front page of search for a variety of keywords, and he gets free traffic from the search engines. And today he's making a healthy five figures per year. Okay, and so now let's kind of get into the meat of the matter and then figure out how to actually find products to sell. Now, the first step is to always get product ideas and determine whether you can actually make money selling what you want to sell. Now there's many ways to do this but here's my personal method of doing this. So first of all I go find product ideas from bestseller lists on Amazon and eBay. And once I find once I've found a group of products that I potentially might want to sell then I use a keyword tool like Longtail Pro to figure out search demand and the estimated revenues that I can make from selling that product. And then finally, I use a tool called Terapeak. And what Terapeak does, it's actually a scraper tool. It scrapes all the completed listings on eBay and gives you an idea of how things are selling on the eBay platform. And by looking at sales on the eBay platform, you can kind of get an idea of how much money potentially that you can make selling that particular item. Okay, and so I'm just going to hop right into it and give you an example in real time on how I would do this. So the first thing that I do is I go and I look at Amazon bestsellers. I just do a search in Google, bestsellers. And for the purposes of this example, I've already kind of prepared something for you. And so the product that I'm going to do research on and show you the process by which I can calculate demand, I'm going to pick a product under the home and kitchen category. And just this is just kind of arbitrary, something I prepared ahead of, ahead of time. I've chosen to do research on these artisan non-stick silicone baking mats. Okay, and it looks like on Amazon they sell for about $13.50 for a set of two. Okay, so let's say I want to sell these things. I'm going to now show you the procedure by which I evaluate this niche to determine whether I actually want to sell these things. Okay, and so the first step is I'm going to show you how to use Longtail Pro. Now, what Longtail Pro is, it's a keyword research tool. So it tells you how many people are searching for a particular item online. And it also gives you an idea of how hard it is to actually rank in search for a particular keyword. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial in real time, I want you to start out at my blog at mywifequitterjob.com. And I want you to scroll down. And I want you to click on Longtail Pro. Longtail Pro actually offers a free trial. So if you want to go ahead right now and install it and follow along, that would be great. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to Longtail Pro. Oh, by the way, if you click on this link, you actually get 50% off the tool within the next uh, 72 hours once you click on the link. Okay, so here's what Longtail Pro looks like as soon as you log in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new campaign. I'm going to call it Silicone Baking Nuts. Okay, and then I'm going to add the keywords that I want to do research on. So in this case, I'm going to type in silicone mats. And what Longtail Pro is doing here is it's grabbing all the different permutations of silicon mats, and it's going to tell me how many people are actually searching for this keyword. Okay, and so as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of different permutations of silicon mats that people are actually searching for. It looks like silicone baking mat gets about 3,600 searches per month. Uh, silicon mold, silicon baking mat, there's a whole bunch of 
keywords related to silicon mats that people are actually searching for. And what's really cool about Longtail Pro is that if you click on this calculate button, it will actually give you an idea of how hard it is to actually rank and search for this keyword. So for example, Silicon Matt here has a keyword score of 34. And in general, anything in the 20s or the low 30s is generally going to be easier to rank and search. Anything higher than, let's say, 35 or 40 is generally going to be more difficult. Okay, and so let's take some of these search numbers now and do a little bit of math to calculate demand. Okay, so Longtail Pro allowed you to check the frequency by which your products appeared in search. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume a click-through rate, assuming the top spot in search, which is around 37%. And so using the baking mat example, let's say 3,600 people search for the term silicone baking mat every month. Average selling price is $13.50. So if you do the math, $13.50 times 3,600 searches times a 37% click-through rate multiplied by a 2% conversion rate, and this is pretty conservative, will yield a revenue of about $359 a month. And the important thing to realize here is that is just for one single keyword in search. And as you saw in the example, there's a whole bunch of different permutations for silicon mat that you would also rank for to increase this number. And also there's a whole bunch of other long tail phrases that aren't encapsulated in the calculation that we've done here. But overall, what you want to do is you want to amalgamate all the different keyword terms and just kind of get an idea of what the potential market for this particular product is. And once you've done that, and you've kind of determined, and, and again, this is just for one product also. You want to have a collection of products and a theme when you actually open your niche online store. But you know, once you've found these products, you actually want to now get some real world numbers to see what you know what the demand is like and how saturated this niche is. And I use a tool called TerraPeak to do this. Okay, and so I'm just going to give you a quick example here. And once again, I'm back on my blog here. If you want to follow along, once again, TerraPeak also offers a free trial. So if you want to follow along, click on this link, TerraPeak here, install the seven day trial, and then just follow along with the tutorial. So here's my TerraPeak account. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a eBay product research. Okay, and I'm just going to type in silicone baking mats. And what's happening now is TerraPeak is just uh, putting together a full detailed report on this particular item to give me an idea of how much it sells. And here's what we want to look for here. So on eBay for the last 30 days, silicone baking mats generated about $4,500 in sales. And I just want to point out something that's very important, which is called the sell-through percentage. What the sell-through percentage is, is the percentage time uh, that an eBay auction that was put up actually completed. And in general, I like to see numbers around at, at least 30% for the sell-through rate. So it looks like the sell-through rate here is good. People are generating about $4,500 a month. And so, you know, selling silicone baking mats may or may not be favorable. Uh, again, you want to look on Longtail Pro for all the keywords to see if you can actually rank and search. And But just for the purposes of this example, I'm going to assume that we want to sell these things. So now is the time to go and actually find vendors who will actually sell us these products at cost so we can actually make a profit. Okay, and so there's many ways to do this, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to show you how much people are actually buying these for. And a lot of times people are importing these from overseas because you can often get a lower price that way. So I'm just, for the purposes of the example, I'm just going to go to Alibaba here. And this is Alibaba.com. And I'm just going to type in silicone mats here. So as you can see here, this is pretty much the exact item that we found on Amazon, except these guys just put a little brand on it. And it looks like the price is anywhere from $2 to $10 a piece, depending on the amount of quantity that you actually were. So just doing some back of the envelope calculations, if you're selling these babies for uh, $13.50 for a set of two, so that means it's uh, $7.75 for each, and if you can get the $2 price, that's actually a pretty decent profit uh, when, whenever you sell one of these guys. Okay, and so I know I've gone through a lot here. 
But basically, I, I just wanted to give an overview of what we just did. So we went on the Amazon bestsellers list to find products that are in demand and just, just to get product ideas. And once you've gotten a product idea, we used Longtail Pro to kind of get an idea of what the search demand for this product was and also to get an idea of what the chances are of ranking in search. Then we used Terapeak to actually get some real life numbers on the eBay marketplace in particular to get an idea if people are actually buying these things and also to get an idea of how many sellers are selling this item. And then finally we went to Alibaba to see what people are actually paying for these at cost to determine the level of profit that you can actually make. Now with all these factors you can get a really good idea of whether you want to actually proceed with an online store selling these items. Now you actually don't have to source everything from overseas and I thought I'd just talk briefly about that. Uh, there's obviously pros and cons to sell, sourcing things domestically versus internationally and I thought I'd just go over a couple of those. Now if you're getting stuff in the US labor costs are generally much higher here so your costs are going to be higher but the advantage is you can purchase in much lower quantities much easier to deal with and contact vendors. The lead times are going to be shorter since you don't have to ship something so far. And the important thing is if you want to start a drop ship store, drop shipping becomes an option if you get a U.S. vendor. Now the advantages of uh, sourcing internationally is you generally will get the best price for your products. You can order, you, you have to order in much higher quantities, however. And the fact that you have to ship stuff from overseas can be a little bit more cumbersome, but it's totally doable. Uh, but the lead times are going to be longer since you're shipping from a, large, uh, a farther away place. Okay, and so how do you find vendors? Now I've already gone over an example with Alibaba to find Asian vendors, but within the U.S. I like to recommend a service called Reference USA, which is actually free if you go to your local library. You can go to Wholesale Central, which is a website directory of trade shows in the United States, and if you want to do drop shipping, Worldwide Brands is actually an excellent place to find drop shippers that have been pre-verified. Now for overseas vendors, I've already showed you Alibaba, but you can also go to this fair in China called the Canton Import Export Fair. Now here's just an idea. So what, what this Canton Fair is all about, it's really cool. It's a place where you know thousands and thousands of vendors in China just all congregate. And the fair is free for people. You just have to make your way to China. And just to give you an idea of the magnitude of this fair, if you see all these little boxes here, on this map of uh, the last Canton Fair that I went to, each one of these lots is actually half a football field in length. So that just gives you an idea. It's probably going to be the largest trade show you ever attend if you decide to go. But what's nice is every single vendor is just kind of all there so you can hit as many vendors as you want in a very short period of time. And again, here's just a photo of what one of, the, one of those little half football field uh, places looks like. All these vendors are just lined up and you just pretty much stroll from aisle to aisle and figure out whether you want to source that particular product and then you talk to them about what the minimum order quantities and the price are. Okay, and So I tend to go to this fair every other year just to get an idea and get new products to, to source and sell in our online store. Alright so I hope you enjoyed that very brief overview about how I find profitable niches and how I source products online but I also just wanted to let you know that I offer a full-blown course that goes over all these steps in great depth at www.profitableonlinestore.com. Now, in this class, I cover everything that you need to know in order to start a successful e-commerce store, which includes how to find the right niche and how to find products to sell, how to source your products from overseas, domestically, how to drop ship. I'll kind of handhold you through the entire process of dealing with vendors, getting your first shipment in, and how to make sure that there's no hiccups in getting the product over to your warehouse. I'll also show you all the steps that are required to set up your own branded website. Now, a lot of people that come to me, they're kind of intimidated by the technical aspects of setting up an online store, but it's actually not that bad and I'll hold your hand throughout the entire process. I'll also show you how to leverage marketplaces like Amazon and eBay. A lot of people these days are selling on Amazon making a lot of profits. I have a full dedicated section on how to do that as well. But ultimately the main goal should be to start your own branded site and then sell on Amazon as a supplement. Now once you have your online store up and running, I'll also show you how to market your website, get traffic to your website, and also convert the customers that you do get. Okay, And once again, all this is very step-by-step. 
and it'll hold your hand throughout the entire process. Now, I also want to show you some of the other features of the course that have been very popular among students. First off, there is a library of over 200 videos that cover every single aspect of starting an online store. And this is a library that I've built up since 2011. Now, I give live lectures every single week where you can actually attend and ask questions in real time because let's face it every business is going to be different you're going to have questions that are going to be very specific to your business and I will be there live to answer them in real time I also invite guests from time to time and these are just leading experts in all different aspects of e-commerce I come and invite them to speak about various topics that they happen to be an expert at and some of the people I've had on so far I've had Spencer Hawes who's the inventor of Longtail Pro I've had Brad DeGraw, who pretty much sells on Amazon for a living. I've had Neville Medora, who's an excellent copywriter, who will teach you how to uh, write very high converting email marketing copy. And I also had Andrea Ayers on, who taught us uh, how to get more free publicity for your online store. And, you know, I'll, I'll periodically invite these guests over. And these are just people that I actually go to for help when I have problems with a different aspect of starting an online store. Now, one of the other important aspects of the course is that it's very interactive and you actually can communicate with the other students in the class. I actually encourage all the students to get together in focus groups because entrepreneurship can kind of be a very lonely process. It's often nice to have another cohort in hand who's actually alongside of you trying to do the same thing so you can actually bounce ideas off each other and help each other online. So I have forums set up for this. I actually also have focus group sign up forms where students can just find each other and form their own groups that they meet with you know once a month or once every week. Now one thing I also want to emphasize is that this course I just do it for fun. There's no upsells. It's just one single fee for a lifetime of membership. And I'm actually there to answer questions. I actually enjoy helping other people. And I offer 24-7 email support. So whenever you have a question, just fire off an email and I'll be there to answer you. So that's just a high-level overview of what my full-blown class is like. And once again, this is just step two in your six-day mini course. There's still a lot more to come, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the class. So once again, uh, it's at ProfitableOnlineStore.com. I encourage you to go check out the sales page. Look at some of the other shops that my students have put together, and let me know what you think. Thanks.